Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Career Focus series on the Success Insight podcast. The Career Focus series supports individuals pursuing careers that tap into their skills and passions. And we also introduce you to the entrepreneurs and companies that are helping to make that dream a reality. Our guest today is Bob Goodwin. Now, we first introduced you to Bob back in September 21 when we were had a great conversation, uh, not only about career transition, uh, but about his organization, Career Club. And we, we had the three more months of 2021, and we thought, let's bring Bob back on. It's the new year. Let's see what's changed. Let's see some of the directions he's going in. And of course, have a great conversation around careers. And really pertinent to his work is to stay help individuals wherever they are on their journey to stay focused. So, Bob, welcome back to the Career Focus series on the Success Inside Podcast. Hey, Howard. Thank you so much for having me back on. It's a pleasure. Fantastic. And I love our conversation last year. And you and I have been in the career transition, transformation realm for a while. I mean, your path is a little different than mine. Uh, you recognize this need as you were going through in your career, and you essentially created a system and a tool around that. And paths like mine, I just got fed up with my career as a, as I like to say, I was an, uh, recover, I'm a recovering IT business consultant, and I went into coaching and leadership development. And I would love if maybe let's revisit a little bit about what is a career club, because uh, you've you launched that last year. How are things going with yeah, that well, area? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. So things are going well. And, and I know we'll get into this a little bit in more detail, but like everything in life, you start to kind of iterate and kind of move as the market is leading you to. And, and I'll share some of that with you. But for sure, what we have learned is that there's a strong market demand for creating paths outside of the traditional applying online, waiting for an executive recruiter to call you, or just being stuck. You know, so no, th things are going really, really well. I'm very, very excited about 2022. Fantastic. And to the point you just made, when I do my own career development work, and I chat with people about what's next, I still hear over and over again, I wrote this resume and I submitted it to a job board, the, the big ones out there, and nothing ever happens. And okay, if, if you keep doing it and nothing's happening, what's, what's that telling you? Yeah. And it's, I, and I, I kind of want to shake them by the shoulders and say, stop it. <laughs> you know, stop yeah. it. So, what is different now for the folks that are learning more about you and Career Club and, and, and that too? How do you change that conversation between this is not the traditional submit a resume and on a job board channel? This is different. Yeah, and, and it's really interesting because, first of all, just on the, the online job boards and stuff like that, as there's applicant tracking systems and things like that. And what they've ultimately done is built walls, not doors into organizations. They're actually designed to keep people out, right. not get them in because of the flood of resumes that they get. Right. But that's kind of the main thing that's out there that people know how to go do. Or as we said a minute ago, wait for an executive recruiter to call you or hey, I, everybody tells me I'm supposed to network. So I'm um, networking and that's not working. So people are stuck. So the process is really broken. So the fundamental thing with Career Club, and this is just drawing on my professional experience, is it's really a big sales and marketing exercise. The, the product is me, right? And so I need to know what's my unique selling proposition. I need to know my pitch, which would be like, tell me about yourself. But that would also include like your resume, your LinkedIn profile, cover letters, things like that. But then where it really turns into the sales exercise is who are my prospects? What's my territory for this offering? 
And a salesperson, right? They've got a product to go sell. They've got a territory they've been assigned and they have a quota. And after that, it's on the salesperson pretty much to go figure it out. What we're doing is taking proven sales methods and tools and applying them to the job search to help people find a career that matters to them. And just in, since you and I spoke last year, being able to crystallize it into that last little sentence that I said, using proven sales methods and tools to help people find a career that matters to them, that's kind of the distillation. So what we have found that's very different is taking the sales mindset, but also the tools to go apply to a job search. That seems to be a very differentiated strategy. Without giving the the keys to the car away, what are some of the examples that you could share about those sales-focused techniques, tools, methods that the client would come to you and you would teach them how to use? Yeah. So on one hand, we're, you know, partnering with best in class resume writers to help kind of do those first two P's that I mentioned, which is what's the product? What is your unique selling proposition? What problems do you solve for companies? And then to basically document that in those three forms of resume and and a cover letter. But I think it is also incredibly helpful in the tell me about yourself. Now I know my story and I can kind of say it quickly and cogently, but what we're doing is, and you may remember this from our last conversation, but basically we've taken a CRM tool and married it with a database. And then based on what the client is looking to do is help them do the discovery of all the companies that are out there that they're not familiar with, who would be likely targets for the services that they offer. And, and again, you know, I appreciate the, you know, don't want to give anything away, but there's no secrets either. So it's looking it, the bullseye is looking at companies that are getting funding. And so we talk about startups. Well, startups can come in all sizes and flavors. It's not just Bob and Howard making something in the garage and trying to sell it. These are companies who are getting 50, $100 million in funding. These are real companies, big companies that have ever expanding needs. But if you've never heard of them and they have fee names, It's like, how how do you go find these opportunities? And so that's where we're bringing some of the the tools that a salesperson would use to identify who are the most likely targets for what I'm good at and the kinds of problems that I solve, and then initiating contact. And this is a very key thing, is not waiting just on job postings, because a job posting to me is like a request for proposal, an RFP. Right, right. Right. And you just, then again, you just fall into this black box process that you've got no control over. You're talking to procurement. You're not talking to the decision maker. And a salesperson would never do that. A salesperson initiates contact. They know their story. They identify who the decision maker is and they initiate contact with that person. That's a very, very differentiated strategy for most job seekers because they don't even know you can do that. And do you need permission to go do that? And yet every salesperson in the world who's doing hunting, that's exactly how you go and and build your territory, make your quota. Sure. Three questions are coming up and it's still early and have probably haven't had all the coffee I needed, but the fact that these three questions popped up one as a former sales and marketing expert, and you still are with Career Club. How do you advise a client about navigating around the the uncertainty or of not hearing back or, hey, we're interested, let's stay in touch. And that can be just a long, drawn-out process. And hear this individual, I mean, they need to pay the bills. They got to do something. Yeah. So no, it's, it's a fantastic point. And it kind of makes me think about two things. You know, one is that most job seekers don't have enough opportunities that they're working at any given time. And so when something doesn't look like an immediate hit, that that's very problematic for them. 
So, so I wish we were doing video because I would be showing you kind of like a, a funnel, right? right? It's a sales funnel. And we need a lot of stuff at the top of it. And we know that things are going to fall out for all kinds of reasons along the way from everything from you're not a good fit to we lost funding for this role to we hired an internal candidate to you know, you're a finalist, but we went with somebody else that had a little bit more experience. I mean, all the reasons that it doesn't work out is why we need so many things going into the top end of the funnel, which kind of gets to the, the other question that you brought up about follow-up and things like that. So when I said we use proven sales methods and tools, follow-up is a huge piece of that. Again, for a very typical and especially non-sales-oriented job seeker, well, I sent Howard an email and he didn't get back to me. No kidding. That's because Howard's busy and Howard gets 115 emails a day and he didn't know you. And so you didn't look like you were on fire. That's the next thing to go take care of. So no, Howard didn't get to you. Did you follow up with him? Well, no, I figured he was busy or he rejected me based on whatever I sent him. So no, well, depends on what you're reading or whatever, but they say like it takes typically like eight contacts or more. So what we're doing is building in an automated follow-up system. So didn't respond in five days, touch them again. Didn't respond in three more days, we touch them again. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, hey, so sorry, I was traveling. So sorry, I was on vacation. Hey, I forwarded your stuff on to Susan, who's the hiring manager, et cetera. So that follow-up is a really key question as well. Okay. I, I love the, the funnel metaphor. I, I use that with my career coaching clients. And it, it applies as well to what are your values? What are your personal values? What are the company's values? What are your skills, your expertise? And you throw all that in. And as you begin to do your research, things are going to be stay at the higher end of the funnel. And the things that fall through are the ones that you still need to pay attention to and act on. And it's to me, that's just a wonderful metaphor. I think yeah. you and I probably need to get together after this podcast and come up with a, a funnel we can then start to share. <laughs> I'm game for that. Let's do it. All right. This is a question I, I, I also have, and perhaps this is earlier on in the whole this whole transition process. And sometimes events happen and we have to act on it. And I got laid off, whether I knew it was coming or I didn't know. Perhaps it was over the course of a couple of months, years, you're contemplating like, this is not the right place for me. And I need to figure out what to do next. How does a service like a career club help? And perhaps it's the funnel again, maybe. How does a service like Career Club help that individual get clarity on what's next or what's possible mm -hmm. rather than just, well, I was an accountant, I was a business analyst, an IT professional, and that's all I know. I have, I got to go back and find a job just like that. And then a year later, five years later, they're miserable again, mm -hmm. or a layoff happens again and they're back to square one. Yeah. So we wrote an ebook called Making Your Own Weather. And one of the kind of core sections in that, in what would be kind of under the general heading of personal branding, is this notion of, and you were just alluding to it uh, a minute ago, talking about the funnel. If, if the listener can kind of picture three circles that are interlocking, first circle is skills like you were talking about skills, accomplishments, it kind of maybe a little bit more, it could be hard skills and soft skills. Like I'm good at bringing teams together. I'm really good at whatever. So that's kind of circle number one. Circle number two is what are you interested in? I, I think sometimes the word passion gets overused. So I don't want to go all the way to, you must be passionate about this, but what are you interested in? Like, what's fun to you? What, what, what would you not mind talking about all day if that was what the nature of the business was? And then the third circle is very clearly, how can I support myself? Like, where's the market going? You know, I don't want to go start to work. This is probably a bad example, but like 
the newspaper business may not be the most fast growing thing compared to other businesses, right? So what am I good at? What do I care about? And where's the market headed? The intersection of those three circles is like a really good place to start orienting your next career move and even a couple of career moves around. Bob, I got to tell you, I love a good Venn diagram. And, <laughs> and, and I think what's really interesting about that is if you're not in that center of those three circles, there's something wrong and you need to do something about it. And, and I love that's where coaches like me, that's where services like Career Club come in because you don't have to wait till you get laid off. You don't have to wait till you're totally miserable. You can begin to stay on top of your career development now through service like a career club or a service like working with a coach where you're constantly thinking about what do I need to do to stay in the center of that Venn diagram? Because yeah. if I don't, then you're letting other events have an effect on you. Let me kind of build on the Venn diagram example for a second. I wrote an article uh, on LinkedIn not too long ago that was pretty well received. And the metaphor was bake a cake. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people will, will come to me and they say, well, Bob, I've been an accountant for 15 years. I've been in the steel industry, journalism industry, and healthcare. I actually am really passionate about your kids with learning disabilities and whatever. Um, like, what should I do? Like, like, should I do accounting? Should I focus on the industry that I've been in the longest? Should I just stop all that and go work for a nonprofit that's helping kids with learning disabilities? Like, what should I do? And to me, it's a little bit of a false choice. It's like saying, I've got eggs, I've got milk, I got sugar, I got flour, which one should I be? And I'm like, synthesize them, bake a cake. The, the Venn diagram then is the cake. That intersection of the Venn diagram is the cake because it's bringing all those elements together in a unique way. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that we found somebody that knows a lot about you know, accounting, but it's also passionate about helping other people. They really get our mission and whatever. But it's like bringing those things together and not apologizing for, in some cases, sort of this eclectic experience base or eclectic interests, things that you like. It's like, find a way to harmonize that and synthesize that into a really compelling story. And then go find the companies where that story is going to resonate. I, I love that. And it just, it is, it's so not this traditional method of, I have to do exactly what I'm doing. And again, then it's to throw your resume into yes. this black box and hope that something gets, gets spit out. Speaking of resume and LinkedIn, my experience is resume is not one size fits all. In fact, I just, you and I were chatting before the podcast and I'm going to introduce you to some folks that are, are resume experts. And one of the questions that was asked to this coach, and, and I've been asked it before, is about putting your resume on a link on your LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's like a big no-no because your job, your resume needs to, it's your, it's your marketing document. It's your branding document, which you're the marketing and sales uh -huh. expert. How do you help people begin to address that the resume that LinkedIn is not one size fits all, but needs to be a reflection of your brand? Yeah. So that's a great question. So the LinkedIn profile is a bit more strategic, right? It's, it tells a broader story that it can be repurposed depending on a particular you know, opportunity. So it should be consistent. Well, one thing that I'll say before I lose the thought is in any event, the resume and the LinkedIn profile, while they serve different purposes, they do need to be harmonized. Right. So I can't be looking at Howard Fox resume and you just paid somebody a bunch of money to do your resume, but you never quite got to your LinkedIn profile because either you're not comfortable with it, you don't think about LinkedIn that much or whatever. And then I, I go look up Howard Fox on LinkedIn, like this, this doesn't look like the same person. 
And, and that dissonance is very disconcerting for a hiring person, a talent person, or the hiring manager. It either says, I'm confused as your reader of your stuff. I'm confused and that's not good. Or you don't care enough to, or you don't understand enough to get these things to be synced together. But I, I think we're on the same page here, which is again, LinkedIn should be telling sort of a general brand story and the resume should be tailored to specific job opportunities. We, we can riff on this a little bit, but you know, like you should have a playlist of like 12 really great key accomplishments and then kind of pick and choose from that playlist and weave them into the resume that best address the things that they say that they're looking for in this role. So it should be more tactical, I guess is probably the word I would use. So if the profile is more strategic, the resume is a bit more tactical and targeted to a specific opportunity. Speaking the language of the job description, the job posting, as you understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that because it's, again, I, I shake my head sometimes and everybody's at their own unique place in life. And so when I shake my head, it with all due respect, but it's just like, here we go again. But I, you know, I, 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 I even I have a, a a resume or resumes depending on the type of opportunity I might be pursuing. Perhaps some uh, LinkedIn. That's right now. That's a little bit of a interesting piece because even as my career as a coach, as a podcaster, evolves it can't be a one size fits all. And I can't, and above all, I can't confuse people because if I confuse people that there's that little section on LinkedIn, which you can turn off folks called people also viewed. That's like, I mean, that's a great research tool when you're just starting out, but once you've landed somewhere, you got to turn, turn that off because you don't want people to go somewhere else. Ooh, and, interesting. I, 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 I'm learning something. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's just like, because if people are hunting and you're the you're you are actually the perfect candidate, Bob Goodwin, but I see somebody else that maybe has a keyword or their they same alma mater, and then if they leave you, chances are they're never coming back. They're not coming back. They're not coming back. Let's keep on the topic of LinkedIn because you have been very active lately on LinkedIn live interviews. And I just haven't you know, I know what they are, but I just there's only so much time in a day we can focus on it, but tell us more about what you're doing with that. Yeah. So it's kind of part of a broader kind of trying to deliver value. My audience is on LinkedIn. So it's a professional, you know, they're, they're going to be on LinkedIn and you know, they've got a lot of times we're on LinkedIn trying to, to learn new things, learn new information. And so I want to be a provider of that. And I mean, the short answer, Howard, is because that kind of a format suits my style. So like you and I are actually doing a Zoom call where we're just getting the audio portion of this to do the podcast. But this face-to-face, -face, just having a conversation with somebody, that's like the easiest thing in the world for me to do. Right. But if you said, Bob, I need you to write a newsletter, I'd be like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm tired thinking about that. And I'm actually a decent writer, but that is just like so much work for me. And, and so that's one. Two is for anybody that is interested in you know, using LinkedIn to your advantage, LinkedIn rewards video. Mm -hmm. So they like video that because it, video drives engagement. Like if there's a little 30 second thing that's video, well, you can't skim read video. You have to like actually stop and read it or view it. And so that LinkedIn likes that, but mostly it's because it's a it's an easy and it's also interactive. I guess that'd be sort of the third thing that I say is we can have people asking questions and making comments and then direct that to the guest. And instead of it just being a one way kind of broadcast, it allows people to to interact. Wow, I think I might need to have a conversation with you and just like rethink this because I I don't like looking at myself. I mean, you're a handsome guy. You got a nice office, nice background, and you're uh, me. I'm. I'm self self conscious. I've got a great voice. I've got a great face for radio. So I share with people, but I do have to share this. I totally get this idea. We all were taught, we're told, 
maybe five, 10 years ago, oh, you got to write a blog, you got to write a blog. And, and that's the perfect New Year's resolution. Oh, I'm going to write a blog. And then a week later, month later, two months later, how's that blog going, Bob? And you say, I haven't started. That, by the way, is the was the impetus for starting the podcast. Because you and I can have this conversation and then I can transcribe it and I can turn that into an article. Yep. So that was that was the whole reason why we started. So we're pretty aligned on that. This is an easy medium. I'm used to talking to people, so it's pretty easy. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to think about the live because I mean as you're you and I are kind of having a conversation, I'm actually taking some notes. And so but what we probably want to do is just look in at each other, good eye contact, good lighting, yeah, et cetera. Exactly. But, okay. Oh, some of the guests that you have, who what who have been some of the the insights that you've gotten? Yeah, from them? so um I'm kind of new to all this world too. And and for what it's worth on the the video part, I am very self-conscious when I'm staring at the camera. But as soon as the guest comes on, like I'm back to being relaxed. And so right. for, for anybody that's freaking out on Oh my gosh, looking at myself. I hate that part too. So right. just that's where, but so the guests, um, the first guest that I had is a guy that I really, really respect a lot. And he sort of was the lit the fuse 10 years ago that got me into helping people in job search mm-hmm. because he was in job search and now he's the CEO of the company that he landed at the end of his job search. Wow. But he's somebody that I really respect and he had a lot to offer in terms of how he went about his job search. And now that he's on the other end of lots of networking calls. So I thought he would be a really interesting guest. Then I had a career coach that I've done some work with helping people kind of think about career strategy, career direction, had a resume writer on my LinkedIn top voice resume writer who was super helpful because of the kinds of questions that people really care about. A recent one that we did just this week was with a Wall Street analyst who spends a lot of time working with C-suite executives. That's his job is working with the CEO of Procter & Gamble and Coca-Cola and whoever. And I just know that my audience either, you know, might aspire to that kind of a role one day. So good on them. This guy has a, a great perspective. Other people just want to know, how do I interface with that level of executive in my own company? And like, how can I do that better? Then we've got salespeople who are trying to call on that level of executive, right, to make their sale. And so I just thought that this guy, Nick Modi with uh, RBC, would be a really interesting person. And most people don't get to talk to Wall Street analysts. Right. And so I thought that would be kind of fun too. I, I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to have to, I know I get the invites to the, to when you're going live, which is one of the beauties of LinkedIn. Unfortunately, yes. it's like right in the middle of my client work, but I, I know I can I listen to the recording. Right. So I will definitely uh, be sharing those back out to my network Thank uh, you. As, as well. Quick question about career club. And again, I don't expect you to go into the detail. We're going to obviously provide backlinks to Career Club on our show notes. But as an investment for someone who just wants to get their feet wet or they're, maybe there's a lot, like, like as a coach, I can see a long-term value of Career Club for myself because it, to me, it's a research tool to help my clients. But let's say there's this individual there, they're, thinking about a transition, they're now forced into the transition because of a layoff, et cetera, a uh, merger, whatever. What kind of investment, kind of a range should they be budgeting for? Yeah. So, so there's, and this is actually a, a development since we, you know, spoke a few months ago, the original model is a do it yourself. So you subscribe to the platform called Career Club One, which is sort of integrating a CRM tool to help you manage all of your contacts and activities and the pipeline. It it has a pipeline built into it, but it's also integrated with this database of every public company, every major private company, and then all these companies are getting venture capital funding. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's the platform. Somebody can subscribe to that for three months or six months Three months is like three hundred dollars. I think six months is five hundred dollars. Right. So two nine nine four ninety nine. 
but and we can go here if, if you're cool is that model works for salespeople or people who are very comfortable with a sales methodology and a sales mindset. Mm -hmm. What I learned was there's a whole other giant swath of people who are probably working right now, but don't have the time, the energy, or the know-how on how to execute a proper job search, but they're not happy where they are. Mm -hmm. And kind of the, the key consumer insight that I heard was I'm stuck. I like what you built, Bob, but candidly, I don't have time to go do all that. And, and honestly, I, I, I haven't looked for a job in 10 years. I, I don't even know what the process is anymore. Mm -hmm. And so we developed something <clears throat> that's gotten crazy good uptake called Concierge Club, mm -hmm. which is sort of a, a service of Career Club. And essentially what we're doing is helping them, you're know, connecting them with resume writers to get the resume LinkedIn profile cover letter done. So now they're on message. We know what their message is. Then curating a list of target companies based on that messaging, usually about 60 companies. And then we go develop who are the proper executives or hiring manager level people at that company for their role and function, their email address, because people get very stuck on, I don't know Howard's email address. Like, I don't know what to go do. It's right. not that big of a mystery, but people get stuck on that. Right. And, and then we're using the tool ourselves. So basically we're driving the bus for the client. So she can keep being a VP at her company and doing what she's doing. And in the meantime, we're doing outreach on her behalf and creating interest in her story. Cause that's what salespeople do. Sure. Again, we're not waiting for RFPs or some, a call in lead. We're going to the marketplace with our story. And this is where the, the whole sales mentality really, really kicks in right. is if we got a 25% response rate, which would be pretty awesome. That means 75% of people said no. Right. Right. And that's where people get discouraged and why they quit or, or don't do enough activity is because they're getting these rejections. And we're like, no, rejection is just the litter along the way to getting to where we're headed. We expect right. it, it that we don't take it personally. And we just kind of keep moving on. Last little bit that I'll say about this is that we're also creating a bespoke Gmail address. So the email's coming from our client. Sure. It's not coming from me. It's not coming from Career Club. Right. So right. at a minimum, they're now expanding their network and who knows about them and what they are. So even if the person doesn't respond, they now have awareness of this person. And when they do respond, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no clunky handoff. It's like, oh, well, I was always talking to Susan in email, and now I'm going to have a phone call with Susan. So it makes it much more seamless. I love it. And we'll definitely provide the, the links so that our, our listeners can learn more about uh, Clear Career Club and Concierge Club. Bob, before we head out today, any final thoughts? You've got some great interviews uh, on the LinkedIn Live, which, of course, we'll share that link as well. And your LinkedIn profile, we've got the, the websites, but any anywhere else you want to drive people to so they can learn more about you and your work? Well, no, thank you for that. Obviously, you know, going to the website is great. You can uh, connect with me. I would encourage people. I'd ask people to connect with me on LinkedIn. I publish about twice a week on there. And so would love to help people, even if you're never become a client of Career Club, you know, if the content is helpful to you, that's a plus. But, you know, the, the thing that I would kind of want to leave people with, you know, coming out of our chat here, Howard, is that you've got more control over your career than maybe you think that you do. And one of the, I think, silver linings of the pandemic is before the pandemic, the frame for a lot of people in their life was work. And then life needed to fit into that frame somehow. And so there's a lot of, sorry, honey, I'm going to be home late. Sorry, I got to work this weekend. Sorry, I got to commute three hours. And the great resignation and all that kind of stuff. To me, the silver lining is that's flipped. And now the frame is my life. And where does work fit in to my life? Sure. And, and I think that is just 
wonderful. And you know, so for people who are listening, you do have control. There are things that you can do. Howard, you were talking about something I think is really important earlier in this conversation, which is don't wait for something bad to happen to you, like a layoff or whatever changes that now makes work unpleasant. Like be planning for the future that you want to have and go start taking, even if it's baby steps towards that future that you want to have, because it, it's your career, it's your life, and, and you've got control to go make it happen. Fantastic. And I think that's uh, the perfect way to, you know, end this podcast, very sage advice. So I appreciate you sharing that, Bob. Well, thank you so much for having me on. It's always a pleasure. What? As well, my, it's my pleasure as well to, that you're to, to have you, and, or we'll figure out how the, that wording was supposed to go. But I, I'm very grateful that you were willing to, to come back on and join us here on the Career Focus series. And I, I'm sure, by the way, we're going to do it again. So you and I are professional. We have a professional relationship. And anything we can do to, to help our clients and create opportunities, I mean, you and I both align in, in, from that perspective. So cool. again, thank you. Thank you. We'll stay in a line and we're going to do a quick close and then you're not going to have a final chat. All right, folks, we have just chatted with Bob Goodwin, founder at Career Club, and just a great conversation today to kind of catch up from where we ended back in September 2021. And when Bob first joined us on Career Focus, I really had a great uh, good chat really around people, you know, what are the, what's their vision and what are they doing and their values, their interests, what are they passionate about, how do they want to spend their life and Really, the the tools that that Bob has shared, not only the Career Club tools itself, the concierge, but also that final insight is don't wait for something to happen. And you have you own your career; you get to make it what it should be for you, for your family, loved ones. And a friend of mine from years ago once said, "We gotta gotta live." We got to work to live, but we've got to rather than live to work. And this whole flip of the job dynamic because of COVID, it's created opportunities for us, which we really should be taking advantage of and start to think about our career. Maybe it's not on a change is not on the horizon, but there's nothing wrong with contemplating it and begin to take some steps, read a book, listen to some podcasts, listen to LinkedIn Live the shows that Bob is hosting, there's lots of ways to, in that pre-contemplation phase, begin to take some steps to actually bring it forward into where actual change will occur. Folks, we hope you enjoy this episode of the Career Focus series on the Success Insight Podcast. You can find us on successinsightpodcast.com. We also have our Success Insight Podcast pages on Facebook and on LinkedIn, and we are on all the major podcasting platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, and especially Spotify because we have the Career Focus playlist. So you can just listen to all these Career Focus episodes. And uh, again, we're going to ho hope that Bob is open to perhaps six months from now, end of the year. Let's take another status check of where we're at <clears throat> and we'll have him back on. So folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a phenomenal day. And we will see you on a future episode of the Career Focus Series on the Success Insight Podcast. Take care now. Success Insight is a production of Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies. Find us online, successinsightpodcast.com.